So we're going to look at um, a technique today for helping us to do some of these integrals. And um, that technique is going to be using substitution. Probably by the end of this block, some of you are going to get the hang of the pattern. And at the, once you get the hang of it, you may not feel the need to do substitution, but we're going to progress over a few days. So you still want to keep practicing. Um, in fact, when there's an integral that I can't do, it's usually the first technique that I go to to see if I can figure it out. So basically what we're going to be trying to do today is we're going to be trying to recognize the chain rule backwards. Well, yeah, you know, chain rule was the tough one, but um, what basically the chain rule has been done. You're trying to recognize that it's there. You're not having to try and do the chain rule. You're trying to find the chain rule. So let me show you what it looks like in the first example, and then we'll talk about how I, you know, knew how to do this stuff. So for example here, um, this integral looks like it might be quite challenging. It also looks like maybe you'd say to yourself, um, why don't I just expand this and then use my power rule? Well, we could, but I'm going to show you how this works. First of all, I'm going to make, choose to make a substitution. For now, just walk through this with me and I'll explain to you how I knew what substitution to make. Um, so I'm going to make u equal to x squared plus 1. Um, the other thing that I, I need to do is, if I'm going to change from x to u, I have to change this dx. It has to be in terms of u. So this is a differential for x. I need to find the differential for u. Oops, sorry. I said du dx is 2x. So du would be 2x dx. So one thing that you might notice here, and obviously I picked a nice easy one to start with, is look at that. It's exactly what I was looking for. This piece right here, oh that's a terrible color, hang on. This piece right here, it actually lines up exactly to the differential for u. Okay. So that coincidence is what we're going to try and uh, exploit. Um, I'm going to make my substitutions into this now. This is the integral of u squared and 2x dx, that's du. So now I've gone from that rather complicated expression down to one which I would say, you know, you guys should be able to do this almost in your sleep. It's just power rule, count up one and divide by the one higher. But we were given x's to start, so we would like our final answer to have x's in it. So I would write this as x squared plus one cubed over 3 plus the constant. Okay. So in that sense, what I've been able to do is find that integral without having to um, you know, go to too much trouble because I made a substitution. So does, can anybody guess why I chose to make the substitution for um, x squared plus 1? Yeah. I've done this problem before, yes, that's, a, that's not a bad uh, reason, but had I not done it, I need to figure out how to use this technique, so, um, yeah, go for it. Uh, yes, I think so, um, well, it just, <laughs> I think you're just looking at it backwards using antiderivative, right? Yeah. What we were looking for was the derivative, so... The pattern here was that I have a function, and I can see its derivative here. Okay. So I'm trying to find those two pieces of the chain rule. The function, which was x squared plus 1. Okay. Here's my function, and here's my um, derivative here. And I can match them back up in the integral. So we're trying to go chain rule backwards. So what do you think? If we looked at this next uh, integral, can anybody see the function and its derivative? Just give you a minute to look at it. Look for a function and look for its derivative. So hands up if you can see this. Three people, four, five, six. Okay, it's spreading. It's a virus. It's the knowledge virus. <laughs> spreading. Okay. Um, Dylan, can you explain to us what you saw? Yeah. Uh huh. So what function did you pick here? There's a, I see a few, right? I see 5, I see e to the 5x, I see 5x. You pick e to the 5x. Yeah, 5x is the one I would have picked too. So again, what you're looking for, 
This is the function, and here's its derivative. So that means I'm going to try and tie this back with chain rule. So I'm going to go like this. Let u be equal to 5x. du is going to be 5 dx. So if I make my substitutions, I will get the integral of 5e to the u dx. And these are the pieces that line up to this one. So I would have the integral of e to the u du, which is just e to the u, your favorite antiderivative and your favorite derivative. Right? Nothing changes. But u is what we substituted. We need to put this back in terms of x. u equals to 5x. So I can replace it, and this would be the antiderivative by u substitution. Okay, so again, that one, maybe you look at it and you'd say, yeah, I get it. I could do that without this technique. Sometimes you'll have that advantage. You know, Maybe you recognize it, and you can just do it. But it's a good technique to know. So I'm going to have us work on the next three. I'll give you guys a, a little bit of time to try and work them out. Um, I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit so you'll be able to see them. But uh, try these next three with your neighbor, and we'll see how we're doing with this technique. All right, let's just see if we're on the right track here. I'll just take the first one. Um, did anybody make a, pick a substitution? They can see a function. They can see a derivative. A few people. All right. Sure. How about Jackie? You want to explain to us what you picked? OK, so you went u should be x squared plus 1. And then you get a differential, which is 2x dx. Yeah, and then everything nicely lines up there. So I should be able to replace this as the integral of u to the 4. And that 2x dx, those two pieces, I could pull those out and say this is the integral of u to the 4 du. So that's uh, just going to be a power rule backwards. So u to the 5 over 5 plus a constant. And to us, u is equal to x squared plus 1 to the 5 over 5. So there's an example where you probably wouldn't want to expand this out to the fourth power, right? That would take more time than this technique does. Um, in fact, the next example, I don't know that there's an, another easier way to do it because the square root kind of mucks everything up, right? It's sort of puts everything, it stops our techniques. I don't know how we would handle that um, easily without something like substitution. So um, in case you're not finished, I'll give you another minute to think about what's the function and what's the derivative. All right, so um, hands up if you've uh, figured out a function and a derivative for this. Are we getting the hang of this a little bit more? Looks, looks like we're possibly getting there. Um, I can see this x cubed here, and if I think ahead a little bit, there's my derivative here. So I'm going to make my substitution. I'm going to go uh, x cubed plus 1 for u, and that means du is 3x squared dx. So my integral is going to be the square root of u du, and this will be u to the 3 halves over 3 halves, plus a constant. So that'll be 2 thirds um, u to the 3 halves. And to us, uh, u is worth x cubed plus 1. So this would be 2 x cubed plus 1 over 3 to the 3 halves, plus a constant. Okay, so so far we've been working with, um, you know, power rule and simpler things. Can we still do this on the next example? Like, you got to kind of ask yourself here, does secant give me a derivative of tangent, or does tangent give me the derivative of secant? Right, you're trying to connect a function and a derivative here. So what do you think? Which one would be the function and which one would be the derivative? Sure, John. Yeah, so the function's tan x, and its derivative is secant squared. So I'm going to say, let u be tangent of x plus 3. 
my differential is secant squared x dx. This gives me an integral of um, u du. So that's just going to be u squared over 2 plus a constant. And that's um, tangent x plus 3 squared over 2 plus a constant. Okay. So how are we doing so far? 5 if it's the worst thing we've done, 1 if it's the easiest. Are we somewhere around a... Okay, somewhere in the middle. That's pretty good. That's about where I'd expect it to be. Um, the only other thing we're going to learn about today um, is what happens if we don't see exactly the derivative we're looking for? It's pretty close. And the only thing that it's going to differ by is a constant. So for example, what would you like to see to do, um, to do it in this example here? What would you like to see for a derivative? 2x, right? We're looking for a 2x. We don't quite have it. Can anyone think of a little trick we could do maybe to get a 2x in there? Yeah, of course. What would you do? Okay, well, if we put a 2 there, we've changed it. So what, what can we... Yeah? Yeah, that's, that's what we want to do as a little trick here. Is we want to say, there's a half on the outside. Then I can put a 2 on the inside. So now those would cancel out, right? I'd be back to where I started with the same expression. Okay. So now by doing it this way... There's my, deriv my derivative I was looking for. It's a little easier to approach the problem. So let's say u is going to be equal to x squared plus 1, and du will be 2x dx. Then when I make my substitutions, I'm going to have 1 half the integral of u squared du, and that's going to be 1 half u cubed over 3 plus a constant, so that's x squared plus 1, uh, sorry, it should be cubed, over 6, plus a constant. So that's what I'd like you to try. If you've gotten the hang of everything so far today, you're still doing the same thing as, can I find the function and its derivative? Only this time, it's not going to be exactly the derivative you're looking for. You may need to adjust it slightly. Let's okay, so see how you do, and we'll... Give you a few minutes to work on those. Okay, so I'll just try to catch up. Um, I make this little change. So because I doubled this here, I had to half out front. So now I can see my function and derivative. So x to the 4 plus 1 du is 4x cubed dx. And so now I have all the pieces. I can see I've got 1 half the integral of u du. So 1 half u squared over 2 plus a constant, which is going to make this um, x plus 4, sorry, x to the 4 plus 1 squared divided by 4 plus a constant. Oops, did I forget, uh, oh, I forgot a square in there. My apologies, I'll have to make a little change here. There should have been a u squared, because that's u, and I forgot the square on it. So this will be cubed over 3, so it should be cubed over 6. Is that, uh, did anybody confirm that for me, just so I know I... Okay, thank you. All right, so again, it's the same idea, only these next ones, um, you may have to work a little bit, think a little bit more before you make your substitution. Um, for example, like, you're looking ahead, you might be thinking, okay, there's an x squared here, there's an x cubed here, so how do I get them to match up? What we'd like is a 12x squared, but I have an 18x squared, so how will you adjust that? Okay. 
So think about how you do it, and then uh, I'll come around and see how we're doing. So sometimes these things can kind of stump you. Um, there's nothing wrong with going all the way to the, this length and just saying, okay, what if I was to completely ignore that 18 because it's causing me problems? Um, and then I have, let's see here, um, 4x cubed plus 1dx. And then basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ignore the 18 now, and I'm going to think about how do I make this line up to here. I would need to multiply by 12, which means I'd have to divide by a 12 on the other side. So it would become 18 over 12 and 12x squared, 4x cubed plus 1dx. And some of you might have figured this out already. Maybe you did it right from the start. But 18 over 12, yeah, that's 3 halves. So if, if you could get it right from the start, that's fine. But if it's the 18 that's causing you problems, get it out of your way so it doesn't bother you anymore. Okay, so this time I just put the 12 in directly and then divide by 12. You'll have to reduce the fraction, but that's easy, right? So I've got um, my u this time is going to be 4x cubed plus 1. The differential will be 12x squared dx. So I've got 3 halves, the integral of the square root of u du. And that's going to be 3 halves, um, u to the 3 halves over 3 halves, plus a constant. So timesing by 3 halves and, mul and dividing by 3 halves is just going to be u to the 3 halves plus a constant. And for us, u is equal to 4x cubed plus 1. So we have 4x cubed plus 1 to the 3 halves um, plus a constant. Yeah, is that anybody? Yeah, OK. So um, for the last one, um, we need to think again. What's missing here if I've got cosine 1 3rd x times sine 1 3rd x plus 7? Sure, Jackie? A third, yeah. So, I mean, this one, might you might think it's tricky to go, well, cosine's derivative is negative sine, so couldn't I use that? And the answer is yes, but it will be easier if we um, use the sine, because sine's derivative is cosine, there's no negatives. And if I use this as my function, then the 7 would disappear. It'll work if you go about it the long way, but I think you'll find it easiest if we pick this as our function. So if that's our function, um, u equals sine 1 3rd x plus 7, then the differential will be 1 3rd cos 1 3rd x. So I could make some substitutions, but first what I'm going to need is I need this 1 3rd in here. So let's put the 1 3rd in. I'll need to multiply by 3 in order to balance it out. Yes? Is this like a double chain rule? A double chain rule? Yeah. Uh, I don't think we have a double chain rule here. I think it's just, oh, I see what you're saying, because it's the sine of x and then the 1 third of x. Yeah. Right, yeah. So I guess there is an extra chain rule in there, but for our purposes, it's mostly just to find the function and its derivative the one time, right? We're not having to look for multiple levels in the chain rule, so. Um, so this time, let's uh, uh, work this out. I have 3 times the integral. And this piece here makes up du. So I've got u du. And that'll just be 3 times u squared over 2 plus a constant. So that's 3 sine 1 3rd x plus 7 squared over 2 plus a constant. Okay. Uh, I won't put those brackets in there, it'll just get messy. Or messier, I guess. 